talk to you about Canada is, you know, for me, you're a legend in my eyes, a pioneer. And I think you paved the way for a lot of my heroes who I followed as a kid, along with yourself coming through. Do you know what I mean? And I want to talk to you a little bit about you and your time coming through at Chelsea as a youth team player. And obviously, you know, I think it's common knowledge. Everybody knows what you faced um, at your time at Chelsea coming through and the backlash of it all and, you know, what you had to deal with. Um, so I just want to talk about that, uh, you know. So, you know, let's go back to, you know, your Ooh. childhood. Was you always destined to be a footballer? Um, you know what? The dream was to be a professional footballer. It wasn't obviously something that was figured in my mum's eyes. Yeah. Um, she didn't see football as a career. Um, coming back from, we're coming from Middlesex. And I say Middlesex, Middlesex. So everybody says, where's Middlesex Enfield. at? Posh. No. <laughs> Enfield. This is, this <laughs> was, this was Enfield. Southall, son. <laughs> Southall. <laughs> right? West London, Middlesex. And a young boy coming up, you know what I mean? In the news regular... Um, on, in, in, on TV regular, up and coming. So, yeah, it, uh, not saying destined, because there I thought that I would have got in um, as an apprentice at some stage, but I didn't. It wasn't that easy. Right. Um, a young kid growing up, he went in the wrong direction, followed the wrong crowd, he got himself in trouble, and it went all pear straight shaped. And it was a case of when I went into Borstal that I had to recognise, you know what, Canners? I need to take my football serious. Yeah. Um, so you took it seriously. Um, you got an opportunity at Chelsea. It was. You came through. So let's talk about the time where, you know, you actually was told that, listen, Paul, well, we're going to give you your debut. Let's talk about that feeling, how you felt as a youngster, all of a sudden coming through to the first team and being given your debut. How was that? A prime that you had been told that it was the day, the day before that you were involved. You don't know. You're just excited. You've come your mates. You find your cousins. Come here, man. You need to see me. You need to support me. And you're on your way. It's, it was Crystal Palace, Sellers Park, and then you make your way in a coach and you're thinking, yeah, all the nerves are generally in. Yeah. And you get there, and your teammates are supportive. Canners, when you get on, do the business. I said, great. Um, you get on now, because I'm a young boy. I'm saying, I've never How been. How old was you when you made your debut? 20, 21, 22. Okay. Like that, it's still there. So, it was a case of like watching the first half, which was nil-nil. Were you nervous? Of course I'm nervous, but I was watching the right back and I thought, he's slow, man. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, everyone was slow to you in those days. <laughs> he's lively, isn't he? He was he's quick, lively. by the way. You know what? He's like, get me on it. What's wrong with this guy? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's still nil-nil. So yeah. I'm second half, I'm expecting change and I'm thinking, yeah, man, I know I've got to get on it. It's one of those, you've got to imagine and realise this back in the day. Yeah. It's 11 players and one sub. Remember yeah. that. Yeah, yeah Not yeah. five players, not yeah, to the yeah, then like yeah. you can use three sub, one sub. Yeah. So you, you've got to be brought on at the right time for any time. Yeah. So it was a case of, I'm looking at the manager and trust me, I can see it now. I was, I was winding up the manager, uh, manager, John Neal, thinking it's coming at 73 minutes. It's coming at 80. Get me on. I'm making a hell of a noise, letting the man know I'm still here. But um, he's got me on warmed up about, it might have been 83rd minute. And I thought, yeah, this is it. I'm going to warm up. And obviously, they were taking off their favourite player, Chelsea's favourite, Clive Walker. And I'm thinking, blood, yeah, what a left yeah, foot. Oh God, <laughs> a brilliant left foot. Don't get me wrong. And I'm thinking, oh my God, you don't put no more pressure. Don't yeah. worry, Candace. Yeah. But it was a warm up. And that was the opening for me because it was like I started me back against the crowd and I heard this racism saying, and I'm thinking, boy. They've taken it's off Clive Walker and bringing on the black guy. <laughs> <laughs> or, or, or at Chelsea, they're taking off Clive Walker and they're bringing on the coloured fella. <laughs> you, you, you gotta, you'll be real about this because you're thinking, oh, I mean, this is, can't be Crystal Palace fans but, going on. Eh? But this, this is what I wanted to say. So you've come on and you're now on the pitch, yes? I'm now on the pitch, but I'm before the pitch. I've been receiving this racism before. So during the warm-up? Owned by my own fans. No, wow. I'm, I'm just turning around after realizing these are my own fans. Hold on a minute. So just are just imagine. So just it? explain to us that emotion. You're a young man coming, making your debut at 21 years old. You get an opportunity to come on, and this is for you the dream. You're at the pinnacle of your career. You're just about to come on and, if you like, achieve that. And you start getting racial abuse by your own fans. I'm in shock. I've totally all that enjoyment, all that is gone. It's lost. I don't even want to go on the pitch. 
I get on the pitch and I stay by the sidelines. I receive the ball by the sidelines. I'm not moving. I get it, put it back. I don't want to go nowhere. That all the adrenaline is gone. Right. So I'm waiting for the referee. Blow the hell of that whistle. I want to get off. And that's, that's what a sad did. day, isn't it? That's yeah. a sad day. I got off, went straight in the changing room, sat in the corner. And you got to understand, when the, my teammates came in the changing room, it was silent. Not usual, it was silent because they heard and saw what happened. What could they say to me? Can is you all right? They know I weren't bloody all right. Yeah. It was left on that. So as a 21-year-old making your debut, you've, you've gone through this kind of abuse that, you know, obviously it was, it was awful, torrid. Did that make you want to leave the game alone or did that spur you want to carry on playing? You've got to understand this. This is like, you know what, a dream? Do you leave it? No, I've come too far to, to, to give in, to be honest. So therefore, for me now, I'm telling cousins, family, canners, and they're telling me leave. The club races, but you've got to understand, it's not the club. It's some ignorant, like we mentioned earlier, it's ignorant fans that don't know and don't understand what it is. So for me, now, I've had to play twice as better as my own teammates to be received, to be supported. And that's what I had to do every time I come on. Yeah. Um, that's what I felt. Um, and for me, it, it was difficult. It was like the first, first five minutes, you know how it is, Rob. When the first five minutes you settled down when that ball came to you and you settled, you knew, yeah, your game's on. Yeah. If it didn't, first I said, touch. damn, Listen, I'm I in trouble. I wasn't a pro, but I know about that too. <laughs> <laughs> but Can you please explain yeah. that to Rob? <laughs> <laughs> have, you, have, have you seen his documentary? Candice well, has got a documentary. So, well, it's I, incredible. I, I, I saw incredible the documentary, documentary and it is a very hard hitting, powerful documentary and is one that I think it's it can also use use as a great educational tool do you know what I mean because I think sometimes even though the football has made great strides in terms of eradicating racism at the game and everything else but I think it's, it's, it's there to almost serve a purpose to say that listen we've done well but it's still there's a little bit more that we've got to do and I think back in your day in particular and I remember on the documentary there was players there with um, pillowcases over their head shouting uh, abuse at you and this that and the other night it just amazes me how you was even you was even to get up in the morning and continue to go there knowing you know when you was walking into it wasn't even you know what the fullness of that it was getting up and playing those reserve games and some of the times in the reserve games you didn't even think that I deserved to be here sometimes you know what I mean but here what can you so where did that strength come from then where did that strength I've got to say this honestly yeah the strength my mum when she came here in the late sixties from St. Martin, it was like what She's been she there, done it all. Yeah, had seen. seen it. I had to say, Mum, you took all that. As a woman. I don't think I could have accepted that. Paul, sometimes you've got to walk away and count ten. Yeah. And some that's what I had to do. I was probably frightened at the time. Yeah. For me to complain, it was a case if I complain, they'll see me that's an excuse. You know what? He can't play hack it. Been weak. Get him out. Been weak. Yeah. Mm. That's the one. Yeah. So I didn't say nothing. I'm gonna be honest. As a young, so boy, as a young 21 year old, you're going through all of this nothing. and you couldn't speak to anyone at the I club. I didn't say nothing. Just for the simple fact yeah. that you'll be seen to be deemed as weak and weak, not strong enough to handle what people was maybe say as a bit of banter or. And that is how Do you know I what? I didn't even think about that. You coming off, you know, as a young fella to go out and face something like that and you realise it's from your own fans. When you, when you walk back down that tunnel, you, you, you know, it should never happen in the first place. Like you say, it's just pure ignorance, idiots. But when you come back down that tunnel, there should be someone there to speak to you and to it, help you through that. It's a massive trauma. Like, it's, I mean, it's, it's, it's a big thing to go through. The only thing like. with that, Rig, is who, who could do that? Yeah, who could do that? Who exactly would, that. Who at yeah, Chelsea but, at and, that time um, could, could have a could conversation yeah. where it's going to resonate with you enough to go, he's yes. been through this, he yes. understands it. Now, don't get me wrong. If you were standing there... Uh, when and it happened to Michael Dubry, you could turn around and go, Look, yes, dude, this been, happened to me, yeah. and I know it. But who, right. could, who could say that to yeah. you? No one could say that to you because you was the first true. one on, at the, at the know, blocks for it. I didn't really understand it because there's nobody came in and said, and yeah. I couldn't go and talk to anybody. Said, Look, don't get me wrong, this is how I'm feeling about it. Yeah. I'm not enjoying this. Yeah. What can be done? Yeah. Nobody came to me. No. Not even I a manager or nobody a senior came player. To me. None of the staff, nobody. There was nobody in there. Yeah. So I went on, the, you can't imagine, this was like for four years, two and a half years at the most. This continued. That continued. Away and home game. The only wow. way I got accepted was when the milk, we called the Milk Cup back in the day. It was milk against Cup, Sheffield God. Wednesday. And we was losing 3-0. 
I come on in the second half, changed it. First mid goal in 11 minutes, 11 seconds, should I say. Yeah. Come back for four, four, three, four all. And that was the only time the following week, we must have played Watford, Johnny Barnes and Phil um, Blissett. Say Lou Blissett. Lou for Blissett. And um, I must have tackled Lou. I, took, well, I don't usually tackle boys. So anyway, <laughs> I took him and bought straight out. Yeah. And the shed in, the notorious shed, started calling out my name. And this is, and I'm trying to concentrate here playing, but I can hear my name and I'm thinking, this is the bloody first time that the shed's called my name. And now, first, we've gone in the, um, the second half, we've gone in the changing room, that was it. And for the lads to say, Canners, did you hear that? Did you hear that? They're calling out your name. You're one of us. And for me, it's like, but lads. I was really one yeah. of you. I've always been <laughs> one of you. Know, you know what it is, though. You know what that is, because the only thing worse than a black man playing football is one that's playing football for the other team. No. <laughs> 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 True. <laughs> See, you should have been at the end of the tunnel. You should have been there. Yeah. So, so.